Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osterberg501, and today I want to go over some of the changes in the open beta patch notes for New World. And I will have the patch notes linked in the description if you want to check them out yourself. I'm only going to be going over the ones that I found more interesting. There are lists of bug fixes and other changes, so if you want to go through the entire list, check that out for yourself. So first off, there was a good chunk of AI changes. So first off, for general AI, the damage scaling for AI above level 50 and above have been increased, which is a gradual scaling from 0% up to 25% at level 66, because higher level elite enemies go past the player level cap, and then increased health scaling of AI above level 30, gradually scaling from 0% up to 15% at level 66. Then we have open world non-boss elites increase health and damage to bring them more in line with expedition difficulty enemies and this is multiplicative with the change noted in general ai so non-boss elites in the open world even be stronger increases damage of non-boss open world elites by 12 to 17 percent and then increases health of elite plus ai which is corrupted ogres corrupted bears etc so those bigger elite enemies that still aren't bosses by 60 percent so those really big big non-boss elite enemies are going to be much much tankier then we have open world and arena bosses increases health and damage to bring them more in line with expedition enemies this is multiplicative with the change noted in general ai increases boss damage by 20 percent and increases boss health by 20 percent so this is both for any bosses in the open world and any bosses in the arenas then we have expeditions increases damage of all expedition ai by 13 percent and again this is multiplicative with the changes noted in general AI. So a bunch of AI changes all either buffing the health or damage of most higher level enemies in the game. And I think this is generally a good change because on the PvE side of New World, once you started getting your builds together and getting to higher levels, there really wasn't much difficulty in the game. So it is good that they are buffing up enemies to make the game a bit more difficult in general. Next up we have a change of PvP scaling. PvP PvP scaling has been reduced. The level difference will matter more in your encounters, meaning that it will take more hits for a lower level player to kill a higher level player, and less hits for a higher level player to kill that lower level player. So essentially, they're just reducing PvP scaling overall. I would say this is a good change. In my opinion, having PvP scaling like this in an RPG is something I'm not that big of a fan of. I would much rather have people keep the power as the level and gear they have, but still still allow everybody to do the same damage to each other so there's no damage drop off from lower level characters but pvp scaling is being decently reduced now there were a ton of different balance changes for a lot of the weapons but the main one i want to go over is for the hatchet because this was such a heavily used weapon in the last beta and i even did a video about how strong berserk was so for the hatchet berserk duration reduced to 12 seconds and the cooldown has been increased to 18 seconds so a pretty big nerf and pretty Pretty sure this is down from 15 seconds and i don't remember the initial cooldown of berserk but a nerf and then they also balanced out the berserking refresh with that nerf so berserking refresh now heals 10 percent of your health every four seconds instead of every five seconds while berserk is active for a maximum of 30 percent health it was every five seconds for a max of 35 percent so it's a slight nerf to the amount of health you get back from berserking refresh but it does heal you faster so the berserking refresh portion of this is not that big of a nerf and will even heal you a little bit faster but for a little bit less of overall healing so it's mainly just the duration and cooldown that got a big nerf for the hatchet now next up we got a change to one of the perks in the game which i also did a video on this perk because of how strong this perk was in aoe situations and i think this one has pretty much killed this perk i seriously doubt anybody will be using this perk in any situation but leveling up and if you just got a weapon with the perk on it that's good in other areas and this is a change to the chain perks so first off the chain perks are perks that are able to be rolled on weapons and there's one for every element so ice fire etc and all of them do the same thing just with a different element so on hit cause a chain attack that bounces between close targets does not trigger off persistent damage or damage over time effects so essentially any effect that wasn't say flamethrower from 
a staff or a damage over time would cause a chain effect that caused extra damage and bounce to nearby enemies. Now it was super strong before because if you cleaved with abilities, say any melee weapon with a light or heavy attack would cleave all enemies, it would also cause these chains to proc off everything hit and then bounce everything as well, making it really good for tightly packed AoE situations. Now this thing wasn't like a god tier perk in every situation, it was just in tightly packed AoE situations, it was ridiculous. Now they've reduced the number of times the chain perks will chain it to another target from five to three. So essentially the chain would go to five enemies before, now it goes to three, a massive reduction in AoE damage, and then chain elemental perks now only trigger off basic attacks, light and heavy, which isn't that big of a deal, but they have a two second cooldown now. And something to note that even though it's a two second cooldown, it's not as big of a deal on the cooldown section of this, you would think, depending on what you're using. So using any chain perks on say a hatchet or something that hits really quick is pretty much useless now. There's absolutely no reason to use it because one of the best reasons for using this on say a hatchet or maybe a rapier or something that hits really quickly is that you could get off more triggers of this than a big two-hander. But now it's pretty much completely useless and if this perk is used at any high level it will most likely be used on like a big two-handed weapon because your attacks are much slower but now since it has a cooldown you could possibly have a chain on every attack or every other attack. But with the chains also being reduced them having a cooldown not working on abilities anymore like I said I seriously doubt this is going to be used at high levels when people have their good builds together. I don't think this is strong enough in AoE now compared to other stuff and it was never that great in single target situations anyway. So possibly a pretty dead perk. So next up we have changes to your equipment loads. So essentially light, medium, heavy. If you don't know, say if you put on too many heavy piece of armor, you'll then be heavy, which will make your dodge just a little dash instead of say a roll if you're light and every different level of that give different perks. So the 20% damage increase for a light equip load and the 10% damage increase for medium equip load should also affect the healing output for the character. So essentially, you would get these buffs from having light, medium, heavy, and they weren't affecting the healing set before, but now it is affecting healing, and healing is reduced by 20% to account for this, so they want the healers to be in light gear. And this is a really weird change in my opinion, because this is very much going to pigeonhole people that want to use a life staff to using light armor, which would obviously make you less tanky, but it pretty much fully requires you when using a specific weapon to use light gear instead of just nerfing the life staff a little bit more or other healing effects so they can still have the better options for different gears. But that is one of the changes. Then reduce the medium equip load threshold from 15 to 13 and heavy threshold from 30 to 23. So essentially what this is doing is making it harder to be at lower level equip loads than it was before. So one of the big things before was to do say a bunch of armor pieces and then have like two medium pieces if I'm not mistaken and that would still put you in medium. And there was a lot of different ways to change up your gear. Say chest pieces counted for a lot more into going up into the higher equipment load tiers. So people would just change out that piece or change out that in another piece. So it seems they're reducing that. So if you're using more heavy pieces, you're going to get into the heavy threshold much more quickly and also that with the medium. And next up, there were some changes for progression. So they added the tier four and tier five as of staffs to be unlocked in the main story, which is something that wasn't in the last beta. T4 as of staffs are required for the completion of level 50 corruption breaches and tier five is required for 60 and 65 corruption breaches. And it's seeming like the upgraded as of staffs add nothing new besides higher level versions of the breaches. And I think breaches are honestly one of the more boring parts of the game. And I think a lot of people are hoping that the highest tier as of staffs would add something different than just being able to be used on a higher level breach. Reduced XP for town projects, raw material turn in reduced by 25%, refined material turn in reduced by 30%, crafting armament turn ins reduced by 50%, and provision turn ins reduced by 50%. So reducing the XP of a lot of the turn in town projects by quite a bit. Now this was used as a way to power level people pretty ridiculously quickly in the last beta. You would pretty 
much have a few people sit there while everyone else gets some resources for them to constantly turn in these quests. Then they put a cooldown on the town board quests. And essentially what people would do then is just teleport to different settlements to constantly do these new town boards. Now they've just massively reduced the XP. This is most likely going to make people pick these up and just do them as a side thing and not be something pretty much anybody focuses on because they're probably not going to be worth it anymore. XP required to level at lower levels has been reduced by a small amount. So this would be, I think, like 1 to 19, I would assume. Then XP required to level from 20 to 30 has been reduced by a medium amount. So a bigger decrease in the time it takes to level from 20 to 30. So those medium levels are getting quite a big boost. Lower levels are getting a smaller boost. Then reduce the faction experience granted per mission for PvP missions in Monarch Bluffs, Cutlass Keys, and Morningdale to account for their shorter travel times. And I do think the town board changes are a decent change because this gives people a little bit more choice in what they're doing for leveling. So now it seems basically 1 to 30 leveling times are going to be reduced. And I think with the town board XP being reduced and the leveling time for the solar levels being reduced, it gives people more choices between doing the main campaign, maybe doing some town board stuff, going and gathering and crafting because it makes everything else quicker because you're getting the same amount of XP. And then next up, we have a few changes for rewards. Increases the drop rates of named items from expedition bosses. So this would be like legendary weapons, legendary armor, stuff like that. Named specific items from these expedition bosses. Adjusted the perks on many named weapons in an effort to better distribute perk availability on named weapons while making more of them feel unique and well synergized. So they're changing up a bunch of the named weapons, legendary weapons, to make them more unique and more well synergized. So hopefully this will make some of them stronger. Normalize the perks on all faction weapons and armor. The change made low level faction armor give crit damage, defense instead of cooldown reduction. So essentially they changed cooldown reduction to crit damage defense for lower level faction armor and then all other faction armor are normalized. This is a big issue because all the faction armor and weapons were different perks, different stats, and one of the factions specifically, their weapons and armor were much worse than the other two and at higher level the faction weapons and armor were incredibly strong and pretty much everyone went and got them to start off their gearing at max level so this would make one faction much weaker so now it's normalized increases the cost of all faction armor and weapons removed socketed gems from all faction equipment so now it's an empty gem slot instead of having a gem inside of it reduced gear score of tier 4 faction equipment from 495 to 490 and reduced faction gear score of faction tier 5 equipment from 550 to 535 so that's a pretty big reduction so pretty much all of this is to reduce the overall power of faction equipment which is a pretty nice change because in the last beta pretty much everybody just went and got this high tier faction equipment full weapons full armor from their faction and they were incredibly strong then they would run around be farming legendaries and stuff like that and be finding no upgrades because the faction equipment was just so strong so it's been nerfed especially tier 5 pretty heavily so hopefully gearing will be a bit slower in general and you won't be able to get this ridiculously strong gear that you won't be able to find upgrades for easily very quickly after hitting max level. So that's pretty much all I wanted to go over with the beta changes for the upcoming open beta for New World. Overall some pretty good changes, some not so good ones like with the chain perk. I think they pretty much killed that perk like I said, but subscribe if you want to see more New World or other MMO videos. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a comment down below what you guys think about all of these patch notes and thanks for watching.